grab a trowel and start breeding some plants. This is our review of Genotype. Genotype is a science-based worker placement game about genetics, and I felt like I traveled back in time to biology class. I wish they had more games like this when I was in school. I might have paid more attention. Eh, probably not. We'll tell you all about it after this quick how to play. Genotype is played over five rounds, with each round having three phases. Phase one is the working phase, where players will place their trowel meeples on different action spaces. Phase two is the plant breeding phase, where players take turns drafting dice, which can be used to validate traits on their pea plants. Phase three is the research upgrade phase, where players can spend money to get more trowel meeples, plant plots, dice spots, and hire assistants. Once a player has validated all the traits on their pea plant and harvested it, they will gain the points on the card. At the end of five rounds, the player with the most points from plants, research goals, and unspent coins wins. We were sent a copy of Genotype from the publisher so that we could do this review video. To find out more information or to buy a copy of the game, check out the links in the description below. My mom was a high school science teacher, biology, earth science, that kind of stuff. So I'm sure that if she had a game like this, it probably could have got a lot more of the students to pay attention. I know I would have paid more attention in class, learning about the genetics and the different, what are they called? Punnett squares and... Things, things like that you do in biology class and stuff like that. I don't remember, but in playing this game, I'm like, you know what? I kind of vaguely yeah. remember doing those things yeah. in class. So I like that this made me feel like I was having fun while learning. It does have that learning aspect to it. I do feel like you do learn, but I don't feel like it hits you over the head. It's not trying to teach you a lesson. It's just incorporating some fun science elements into a game. Yeah, like the the big T or big F and little F and, you know, the little F, little F. So the different traits, how you have dominant and then uh, recessive and then the mix, the heterozygous, like all those phrases started coming back to me, like homozygous dominant, homo homozygous re recessive. So I'm just like, oh, OK. So it was kind of a blast from the past, but you're right. It doesn't like it's not in your face like learn, learn. It's just like, oh, OK. Oh, that's right. It was P-Pat. Uh, pea plants and like Mendelian genetics and stuff like that. So very, very good. And then even just the production value, you know, nice artwork. It's it, it, it almost looks like a gardening game. But I mean, that's how they did the research back then. So it is kind of a gardening game because you are getting your pea plants, you're planting them in your plant spots. So you have different plants, uh, plots that you're going to plant your pea plants on. You got to get the cards and you got to place them there and then you gotta match them up. So yes, it is science-based, but really if you just think of it as a board game, it's all right, I have my worker area, I'm gonna put cards here, and I have to match up these symbols with the dice symbols. And then when you get those, you cover them up with the, the plant leaves, and when they're both covered up, then you can harvest this, and then you'll get those six points from this card. And the mechanics of it are fun. It's your basic worker placement. You're gonna have your trowel meeples, which are these, little trowel meeples in different colors, and you're gonna place them on different action spaces, just like in any worker placement. You're gonna be able to get new plants. You'll be able to get new bonus cards. It'll give you bonus abilities as you're doing different actions. You'll be able to do upgrades in the upgrade phase. There is dice rolling. However, it's not that impactful to you because everyone rolls the dice at the same time or one player rolls the dice for everyone, then you roll it, and that reveals what the different Genes? What are these things? The F, 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 big F little thing? Alleles? On the spot. Alleles? Whatever they are, you got to match <laughs> them up with the dice. And whenever, if it's one, two, three, or four, determines on where the dice go, and that's what the symbols are. So that when you collect the dice, that's what you can cover up. Either the little F, little F, big F, big F, little T, big T, etc. Those things. So if you're building your engine enough, and you have enough dice spots, because you can get more dice spots that you can add to it. If you do that enough, then basically you can pretty much cover up all the plants that you need. Yeah, I always felt like the I needed more moves and I needed more money. Like I felt like those were the two things that I was just always lacking. And that's maybe the struggling researcher. You know, maybe that's a story of the ages, I guess. <laughs> you know, always need money in science. Yeah. There is a little book that teaches you the science behind the game, too, if you want to read about it, like the traits and et cetera. But when, as you're playing the game and you're looking at the little Punnett squares and you're like, OK, T, T, all right, that's one. And then these. I mean, if anything, it might teach you a little bit more about like probability and stats because you're like, OK, these are more likely to happen. This is rare. This is rare. So even if a kid hasn't started learning about genetics, it could prime them and be like, oh, you know what? 
I've seen the big letters, little letters, and and how you know I remember that. So it might make them a little bit more interested. I want to say I might have been, but we'll never know. I think the thing that stood out to me was the third phase, the research and upgrade phase. So every time we had a chance to hire an assistant or get a plot or get a new meeple, it got a little bit more expensive for the next person. And then when the round is over, then like everything shifts back down. So they use like a little abacus that moves over a little bit whenever someone buys or gets an upgrade. And then you just keep going until you run out of money. So I think that's probably one reason that I felt like I didn't have a lot of money because maybe I was just spending more than others were, I don't know. <laughs> so one thing I liked is the mitigation of the dice in this game, because there is dice rolling, but it's everyone rolling and then you're drafting from the dice that are available. But I like the mitigation of you can place your worker on the different spots and then you can choose first. And then there's second shift where you can place it on the spots and you can choose first then as well. But even if you don't do that, or even once you've exhausted all that, if you still have spaces for your dice, you can keep drafting dice. So they really did do a nice job of making it so that even if you don't like dice, like I don't like dice games, that's not what this game is about. Even though you see the dice here, there's ways to get around it. It's really just a selection process. So the dice are kind of just like a random generator of, oh, these are your selection. The way that they mitigated the dice and made all that, I never felt like, oh, I hate the dice in this game. I never had that feeling while playing. What did you not like about the game? So it's only played over five rounds and maybe they did so much play testing that like that's the sweet spot because I can see if it went on for 10 rounds, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, I get going. But I just felt like I never got that like engine built. And I know it's not an engine building game, but I'm, I'm usually a big fan of those. So this may be more of a personal taste kind of thing, but I felt like it was a little too short. So there's a couple mechanics in the game that I didn't like, and it's not that it hurt the game, I just didn't understand it. So one of the things you could do is you could change the traits on the sides with these little flags. And that just feels like a wasted move, like because you only have, as Lee pointed out, so many turns to do so much in five rounds. Bending a worker to change this, which basically just changes the probability of the dice, seems like a wasted mechanic. So A, it's extra cardboard that they didn't need, and B, it's, I don't know, it just feels like a waste mechanic. It doesn't hurt the game, you don't have to use it. I'm just sitting there the whole time going like, what are those flag things, and what are they doing there? What are they? So I didn't really like that. Overall, I was excited to get this to the table. I liked the production value, the pieces. Dice was a little, yeah, okay, but you know, it wasn't that big of a deal as far as because you could mitigate it. So I'd probably say I'd give this a five. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I had a lot of fun with it. I do like the science and learning aspect. I like that it's not hitting you over the head. I do feel like if I had games like this when I was growing up, I would have learned more about the science. Maybe it would have kept, maybe it wouldn't have kept as far as actually understanding it. But the game definitely would have been fun. So overall, I'm gonna give it a seven. And that was our review of Genotype. What'd you think? Can you dig it? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, we'd like to thank the publishers for sending this so that we could do this review. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. Now go party like a board gamer.